Hi people, this is part 3 and the last one of Blender DNA tutorial. Ok, we want to achieve something like this, the DNA with a glow, particles and a nice background. In two previous parts we finished with something like this, so as you can see it is missing the glow and the nicer background, so we want to replace that solid yellow with the gradient. Ok, this is my scene from the end of the second part and let's start with the background. Please uh, make sure that you have the number of samples of the render heat to some low number like this and it is located in the render settings tab here, right? Okay, and you can also see that to see the background you just need to switch the mode but we can switch it back because it is quite intense. Okay, now go to this shading tab and you can see we have a blurry textured background provided by Blender. Uh, we will not use it this time. Change to this preview, okay? And uh, press zero to see the camera view, okay? Now change the drop down here from object to world. And as you can see when I zoom in, we have the material here and the values are the same as in the uh, right properties panel because it is very simple setup so it's basically just a color and if we change the color you can see it updates here in the viewport as well as here right we can go back to this yellow okay you see two boxes they are called nodes and they are building blocks for your materials those circles here here and there are slots and you can see you have input slots on the left side and output slots on the right side. And if you connect the output slot from one node to the input slot of the other, you will pass the data, the values uh, that they are set here. So we're just transferring this uh, color in this case. You can build a complex node graphs that way, but we'll keep it uh, simple this time. Press Shift A to search for a gradient node, gradient texture. Okay, like that. Place it, okay, and connect this color output to color input of this node. It is currently black because we have to adjust a few things. Basically, we have to tell Blender how to map the gradient from the word into the background. Basically, we need to tell how to map that gradient to the word background. Let's add a color ramp now by searching it. Ramp and place it, okay? Now move the gradient texture here, pick the color ramp and place it so the connection is highlighted and drop it. So it's like auto reconnecting inside those two. You can also disconnect by dragging out like that and dropping and connecting by just dragging and connecting. Let's now select the color stop, this is the first one, the black one, and change the color, for example, some green one, like that. As you can see, we can already see it in the 3D viewport, in the background world, but uh, here we have the gradient from green to white, and we also use the green color, and it is because we need to adjust some uh, things to map it properly. Now let's change the value for the second one and let's select some orangey reddish like that for example. So you can see we have a nice uh, gradient. To properly instruct Blender how to map the gradient into the 3D world we need to add another node. So let's shift A and add coordinate, coordinate texture coordinate node. Okay? And as you can see, if I connect the first one generated to vector, nothing happens because this is like a default value. So we can disconnect it. Connect the window value to the vector. And now you see we have finally our gradient. So there is a green and it blends into this orangey reddish color. So it is looking nicer. But we don't want to make it that horizontal looking. So uh, let's rotate the gradient a bit and maybe move things out. First, I will make some room for it. So let's just 
move this node and shift i search rotate vector rotate okay and just drop it when the connection is highlighted like that now let's change some value and maybe start with the rotation because it's the most important like minus 45 degrees as you can see we have now a nice diagonal background and it's starting from green here up to orangey reddish here right you can play with some other values for example shift things a bit like that and you can also add another color ramp like here so maybe change it to bright yellow so you can just play with the gradient how you like it and the same uh, way you can move things like that play with it as you want so let's uh, try to render it press f12 or this item from the menu and now you can see already that uh, our gradient is rendered and it's looking quite nice so this is this orangey reddish color and here is the green nice let's escape by the way i will not go into details about these vectors and mappings because it is a topic for another videos but uh, basically we just told the blender here to map uh, the 2d image to the texture to the gradient to the 3d space right so now let's go to this compositing tab and check use nodes as you can see we also have nodes here but they are a bit different because basically they operate on the rendered image we want to add the glow behind the helix so we will adjust this rendered image to make that happen please be aware that this setup is executing after the initial rendering so it is faster it's mostly operate on pixels and you can use it to adjust things and enhance it uh, differently than just by modeling and shading so this is like another uh, way to make your image better this composite node is uh, similar to material output in the shading it's just for triggering the compositing so uh, you have something connected to it to make it happen after rendering to see a preview of our compositing let's ctrl shift click on the render layers and you can see our last render is uh, here in the background right so you can select the viewer now and go to view and you can change the zoom value or press fit so it fits all the way here so you can see basically the result of our uh, last render you can move the viewer now like that by the way don't worry about the noise we will handle it later you don't have to redo all the stuff uh, every time it's just uh, the setup you make here will like reapply to the new render so don't worry about that okay to make this uh, setup simple i will use only two other uh, type of nodes and that will be a blur for basically blurring things out like in any photo or image editing software and the other will be shift i alpha over okay i'll just move it here for a moment okay let's disconnect the composite and viewer for a moment so we can more clearly see the background and we can move things around and you can move the blur here maybe i will zoom in a bit and i can move this because we not need it mm, okay like that and i will show you by connecting the image to the blur and to the viewer you can see that if i change some values like that you see we have a blurred image and you can of course adjust it as you want and need and yeah we will use that for making a glow okay let's set it as i said previously so 10 here 5 here of course you can use different values but it's just an 
example and the alpha over is for composing two images together. So you connect two images and there is this fac which stands for factor so it uh, basically tell how to compose them. Okay, so you can either use a, just a value or you can use a mask as an image mask. You can also use the alpha over to make some tricks and for example I will show you this depth value I will show you to how it looks in the viewer I'm not sure whether you see it in the video recording but it is not fully white there are some other colors like some mask here you should see it in your blender and uh, to make it pop out I will connect this to the fac and okay I will show you how it looks so connect it to the viewer and as you can see we have a mask but it has a really sharp edges. We will use that mask for a moment but we'll need to uh, smooth those edges a bit. Okay so let's uh, move the blur here and shift D duplicate and put it here. So it's uh, reconnected and now you can see we have our glow basically like white glow. So yeah, that is nice and if I reconnect from here, it's uh, this blurry image, right? But uh, let's connect it here. So this is the same, whether I will connect this one or this one, we have the same result, right? Now lower the values of the top one as I'm showing you, like this and this will be used to basically make the mask more smooth. So as you can see here is the mask, it's sharp and here it's smooth. So it's not that glowy but it have a smooth edges. Now shift A and search for reroute. And this is like a helper socket that will allow you to basically change the flow of connections. So we can connect uh, the output from this one to this uh, socket and from this now let's see the value and it will be of course the rendered image because it just changed the flow, right? Now let's duplicate alpha over, shift D, move it here. Now let's connect this image to fac, this one to the first one and this here. Let's check how it looks. And as you can see, we already have a glow behind the helix. The problem is that the glow is really strong and uh, we lose the background, but don't worry, we will fix it. By the way, if you need to move this one, you need to use G shortcut because if you try to move it by dragging you will uh, start drawing a connection so for this one just move with G and let's uh, lower this alpha over a bit and guess what let's duplicate it but uh, I promise you it's one last time now let's make some room here so maybe move those a bit and we want to connect the viewer compose it to this one because this will be like the last uh, note we were stitching things together and now connect it here and connect it here and as you can see we have our glow we have background the only problem is that the glow is too strong so we not see uh, like properly our background so let's adjust the fact something like that and yeah this is almost it what you need to do now is going to the render settings and change it to higher number of samples like that because now it is uh, really grainy and it will improve things a lot so now i will trigger rendering and uh, we'll be back when it will be finishing so let's hit render image Okay, I'm back and as you can see, rendering is uh, finishing the last few squares here 
and after that the compositing will trigger so we will have our glow but we already see uh, we have a nice uh, render with smooth things here without that noise and uh, particles and background so let's just wait a moment okay and it's done so as you can see you can still uh, see the background behind it uh, more here than here because it is more dense here but yeah and the glow is nicely blending with the gradient so that is uh, what we wanted something like that you can of course uh, make it a lot uh, different and improve it make a different color shape and so on but I would say it is time for celebrate it a bit okay now you can save the image so image save us and just save it and if you want play with it uh, more just uh, here or in the modeling or in the materials shading you can make uh, adjustments and if you want to make some bigger changes uh, maybe make some copies so if something will crash or you want to go back you will have it i hope you had fun and learned something please leave a comment below hit like and subscribe if you are not already subscribed Please check my other videos and stay tuned for the next ones. Bye!